Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Tuesday the 9th of November. I hope that you're well and um, thank you for joining me. Do comment, let me know you're here. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of today's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. On a Tuesday, the sort of overarching theme of our prayers is incarnation. And so as we've gathered, we take a breath, we remember we're in God's presence and we pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, yet born of the Virgin Mary. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Holy God, holy and mighty one, holy and strong one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and incarnate one, holy and indwelling one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and life-giving one, holy and guiding one, abide in us. And today the psalm is Psalm 121. My help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. My help comes from the Lord. And we continue reading from the prophet Isaiah. And we've reached Isaiah chapter 5, beginning at verse 25. Therefore the Lord's anger burns against his people. His hand is raised and he strikes them down. The mountains shake and the dead bodies are like refuse in the streets. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. He lifts up a banner for the distant nations. He whistles for those at the ends of the earth. Here they come swiftly and speedily. Not one of them grows tired or stumbles. Not one slumbers or sleeps. Not a belt is loosened at the waist. Not a sandal strap is broken. Their arrows are sharp, all their bows are strung. Their horses' hooves seem like flint, their chariot wheels like a whirlwind. Their roar is like that of the lion. They roar like young lions. They growl as they seize their prey and carry it off with no one to rescue. In that day, they will roar over it like the roaring of the sea. And if one looks at the land, there's only darkness and distress. Even the sun will be darkened by clouds. So another challenging passage from Isaiah. So let me read a reflection on that passage. And this week the reflections are written by Ben Quash. He says, Isaiah's faith is in a God who can create something where formerly there was nothing. A God who can bring into being things which were not. This is the God who breathed into the mouth of Adam and made of him a living soul, a breathing being in his own right. The Hebrew word translated soul, nefesh, is connected with the idea of breath. This is the God whose spirit breathed on the waters at the very dawn of creation, when the world was summoned into being from nothing. For Christians, this is the God who in Jesus breathed on his disciples on the day of his resurrection, giving them the Holy Spirit, and creating them afresh, equipping them for their tasks in a world made new. This passage shows that the divine power to create with something as simple as an exhalation is to be feared as well as rejoiced in. In what seems almost like a parody of the act of giving life to Adam, the Lord God blows out breath and summons death. The breath of God issues in a whistle and a new threat springs into being. A people at the ends of the earth, swift and terrifying, appears on the horizon. What scant comfort there is here must lie in the hope that a, that a God this powerful is finally a creator, not a destroyer. 
a tough passage, but we hang on to that hope of God, the creator. And so we pray, beginning with the collect for this week. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that the earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer. And once again, we use a prayer today as COP26 continues. And the prayer, can, prayer, prayer is prefaced with a, a reading from Job. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? And a prayer written by Pope Francis. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love and peace. Amen. And we continue in prayer. That the coming of Christ may disperse all darkness. That the birth of Christ may hallow all life. That the love of Christ may be in every heart. Lord, have mercy. That the peace of Christ may fill the world. That the descent of Christ may uplift all peoples. That the humility of Christ may teach us gentleness. Christ, have mercy. That the presence of Christ may be within us. That the power of Christ may be upon us. That the Spirit of Christ may fill us, Lord, have mercy. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, born into a human family, may we know you in our homes. Bless our families and friends, our neighbours and all your people. Grant that we may rejoice that you were made flesh and dwell among us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father who has shown his love for us be with us. May the Son who's come to be among us be with us. May the Spirit who fills the whole world be with us. The Holy Three be within and without us now and evermore. Amen. So thank you for praying with me today. And um, I hope that you have a great rest of the day today. And if you're able to join me, I'll be back here tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.